with the edpa does that offer do they offer um rep sales rep information no they only offer or do you allow sales representation at your show or, or must the artist express i do not allow sales representation at my shows unless there are special circumstances for that if someone is nine and a half months pregnant, they can send a sales rep. Um, very often, um, we have special exceptions. But as a rule, no, I do not allow sales reps. I want, with my show, the direct communication between the artist and the retailer. I think it's that important. Service is everything these days, gang. You're selling service more than you're selling product. Yes. Wendy, um, I know that you do allow guilds to show. Yes, we do. Um, and I, I know that they, they're not selling, they're actually taking referrals. Yes, guilds that exhibit in our show are allowed to take referrals. And what we do is we allow the guild to bring merchandise into the show and display free in a booth. And then the guild takes business cards from retailers that are interested in certain pieces, writes the names of the artists on the back of the business card, puts it in a box, and brings it back. Data enters it and gives you a list of all the galleries that were interested in your work. Yes? Do you think that that's a good way for an artist who maybe have ne has never done a trade show and they just like to see um, whether their work would, would be acceptable to the buyers? Do you think that going through a guild is a good way for a person like that to Hal out? Stevens at Ohio Designer Craftsman will tell you that. And I can tell you from my own personal experience that many of the people that he brought work for five years ago are now permanent exhibitors in our shows because they got an experience, they got some experience and they built up a following and they finally said, gosh, if Hal can bring me back 20 orders, 20 leads that turn into orders. What could I do if I were there? Um, and that's been very successful. If you are looking for more affordable ways to sell your work than doing a trade show, there are plenty. One of them is the Guild Opportunity. Um, I think the Guild is considering doing that for next year's show or Boston or something like that. And. Uh, the other is Hal Stevens, Ohio Lifestyles Directory, which is very inexpensive to exhibit, uh, to uh, put an ad in. Uh, and the third one would be, of course, an ad in Niche Magazine, which is a bit more expensive than uh, Hal Stevens' opportunity. Did you say Hal? Hal Stevens at Ohio Designer Craftsman. Yes? In the case where a guild um, has a presentation at your show, how many people do you allow as representation for that booth? If we were going to run a booth cooperatively um, to present... I don't mind. Deal. It doesn't matter how much merchandise you put in. It What matters to me is that you don't have more than three bodies in a booth. That was my question. How yeah. Many, you know, yeah, two or three bodies at a time in the booth is... When you do have one of these displays, how, how large is something like that that has uh, co-op in it? Would it be a 10 by 10 or would it be like Well, one? some guilds take two or three booths. I give them the first one for free. Some guilds take two or three booths and some take one booth. First Nations, which is the Native American arts organization out of Virginia, First Nations Arts, takes two or three booths. Yes? Do you allow buyer activity out of those booths or is it strictly for referral? There's plenty of buyer activity within those booths because buyers are looking for new work and very often the guilds are bringing more new work than anybody. Um, but no, I do not encourage orders to be written. I don't want the guild to make a commitment on a delivery date or on a production amount. I, what I want is for you to begin to, be gil to begin to develop a relationship with that retailer. And to be perfectly honest with you, if a guild is bringing 10 or 20 or 30 people's work, they can't give the attention to the retailer that the retailer needs to make sure that as many people as possible benefit from the, uh, the experience. So if they're too bogged down writing an order for one person's work. So when a guild comes in, it's more as a representation of an entire membership rather than 
a cooperatively run. Now it really booth. is a cooperative, a cooperatively run booth because each artist who participates will pay a fee to the guild, and then they will send three to six pieces. They will send a small selection. You don't send one piece of work because you want the retailer to understand what your work's about. So it's going to take three to six pieces to do that. Um, or they may tell you you've got one abstract shelf that's 24 inches by 24 inches or 15 inches by 15 inches or whatever that is um, to do that. So there is a small selection of your works where they can get a feeling of what the line is about. That's just enough for a tease. That is not something you can really write an order on. <coughs> as far as people trying to keep their costs down, um, do you recommend or promote cooperatively promoted booths? Say two or three or four people got together and had three booths, <coughs> size wise. Yeah, I do three. not recommend it. Um, we have in the past allowed it from time to time as long as you're using a booth and a half. I do not allow two people in one booth. Uh, I have from time to time, depending on the case, allowed two people in a booth and a half, no less than that, because of the space issues. You've got just enough space in a booth and a half, it seems, to put a small gap in between the two lines of work. You mentioned earlier if you're all one company, that's a different story, though. You mentioned earlier that um, a lot of buyers like to buy on the spot. Yes. How much product do you recommend um, bringing to fill their order so we're able to... I don't think you need to bring a lot unless your line is specifically that way. If you make, if you make production jewelry but all the stones are different in it, uh, the buyers are going to want to pick out those <coughs> amethyst pieces that they really want or the pink quartz pieces that they really want. And that's OK. Then you can have backup. You can bring it in nice little Rubbermaid containers and have plenty of, of <coughs> stuff for them to look through. Um, but if you make pottery, it's not viable to bring Mark. It really isn't. It's mostly for jewelers and people who have very small items. Or if you're doing the, um, if you're doing the June show, things that are specifically for the resort. New England area, you know, last minute items. So the larger items you would say just bring samples and write the orders? Yeah. Yeah. Or I, I'd like to recommend too, in a case like yours with the glass, um, if you, you really feel you're going to be pushing such large items and they're, they're going to be leaving your booth and you don't want the hassle of shipping them a long distance and you can deliver to local galleries, bring enough stock to be able to accommodate the local buyers. So, you, know, you, you obviously yeah. don't want to carry the large piece of the show, but I would be happy to deliver it to your gallery mm -hmm. after the show. Let them buy there. In trade shows, there. it's very often the case that the manufacturer will say, I'll give you 5% off if you'll take my samples from me. I won't let you select the samples, but if you take the whole, if you buy the whole booth from me and take it off my hands and pick it up on the last night of the show, I'll give you 5% off. And the buyer looks at that and they say, 5% off and I don't have to pay shipping fees. That's 10 or 15% off, for heaven's sakes. That's not a bad deal. I'll take it. You know. And it's the cost of what you would pay to sales, right? Really? Yeah. Yes? A couple of years ago, I was out to the Philadelphia show, and you had um, a featured section of artists, I think, from Australia. Yes. In the international section. Uh -huh. How is all that going both ways? I mean, are we, are you, are there buyers from other com countries at the shows buying? There are buyers from other countries. Versa? Yes, mm -hmm. we have buyers from Europe, Australia, Japan, Canada, um, Caribbean, Hawaii, Trying to think of other countries. Not a lot, you know, 50 per show, something like that, for the big shows. Um, the, the Japanese seem to be the best right now. But they're in a big recession, and it's my understanding that they've told um, all of their buyers that they are going to, because of the recession, stay home this year. They're not going to foreign trade shows. 